welcome Leo to your in-depth monthly horoscope for April 2024 for the Ascendant, the Sun or the Moon. I'm going to give you some standout details to look out for. Please stay with me. I will explore in much greater depth all the ins and outs particularly relevant to your sign. And the thing we have to be very mindful of with yourself is your ruler, the Sun. And the Sun is in that glorious total solar eclipse of the 8th. If you're in the southern hemisphere, it will be the 9th. But that's going to be within one minute of Chiron, the wounded healer. But all of this is in house 9 for you, which is very experimental, adventurous, and more risk-taking. But also Mercury is going to be going retrograde on the first day in that sector, but we have a number of contacts right through this month in the ninth house, suggesting new experiences, uh, a part of you demonstrating after years of Pluto really pushing you to comply with a more formulaic way of leading your life. All of this is going to push you into reinvigorating the fire principle within you and showing just how exciting you can be. Please stay with me for more. But if you are new to my channel, thank you so much for joining us. This is very much a community. If you have any thoughts, please share them. I interact with each comment. If you're a returning visitor, thank you so much for your company. I much appreciate all your likes, comments, shares, and subscriptions. If you've yet to subscribe, I'm racing towards 120,000 subscribers. Please click or tap on the bell notification symbol. That means every time I drop a video, you will get an alert. And if you would like to ascend above this Zodiac broadcast, and embrace the power of personal astrology. If you give me three pieces of your birth data of time and date and place, or if you don't know your time, date and place, I can produce for you your life roadmap report. This will give you searing insights into the patterns that have played out in your life so far, but also a much more intimate understanding of how to work with these energies more effectively going forwards. And in my special package of 30% off, you can also get your 12 month transit report. That's the moving planets in the sky interacting with that unique blueprint that only you were given when you were born. Please see the link below for more. So Leo, on the screen now, you can see the event chart right at the start of the month. The sun, as I mentioned before, is the key player for you and that's at 11 degrees and 45 minutes in Aries. So it's just into the second decan of Aries, and guess what? The second decan is ruled by your sun. So the sub-rulership of that second 10 degree period is amplified by the energy of your ruler. So that's really exciting. But having the sun in the ninth house is going to see you thinking about shaking things up showing a little bit more of a spontaneous uh, approach, being more free-spirited, wanting to travel, perhaps even in a physical sense, be a bit more rugged in your approach. But you can see the North Node, also in that second decan of Aries, very close to the Sun, and they come into an exact conjunction on the 5th. And in a very spiritual sense, this is a key moment in your whole year, because something is compelling you and attracting you towards a particular approach. And it may be more experimental than you've tried in the past, but you're set to find it truly exciting if you're really in touch with the potential fluidity. The ninth house is a very mutable kind of energy. It's not staying with what you know, it's trying out different things. But there is a bit of a catch because you can also see in your chart that we have a gathering of energy in house eight and that's where you're most devoted invested and literally it can be in terms of long-term uh, finances whether it's shares or pensions uh, property uh, business all of those things are governed by the eighth house and i just want to draw your attention to the moon because it's actually in the fifth house very much in keeping with your sign, which is going to emphasize your warmth, affection, and your go-getting energies, 
but that is squaring with Neptune exactly in the eighth. If there is a business partnership or a financial situation where there's a bit more of a personal dimension attached to it and you're not quite sure, this is saying to you, make, uh, ensure that you do get uh, a factual understanding of the potential of this that goes beyond the more spiritual attraction you may have. Now it just so happens that Venus and Neptune in that eighth house are so tight together they become exact on the 3rd of April that actually could be beautiful for you in terms of a sexual connection or if you're drawing closer to someone in a spiritual way wow that can be such a sweet moment but let's just also be mindful that saturn is in your eighth house so really important when it comes to using your resources that you're doing so in as astute a way as possible so the fact that the sun the north node chiron and even mercury are all in the ninth house being more adventurous saturn is saying you need to uh, weigh up that adventure and that open-mindedness with a very thorough systematic approach if you are talking about shared resources but wonderfully for you jupiter and uranus are right at the top of your chart in house 10 that's your connection to the wider world so the drama that you're going to bring to this month through house 9 and some of the strategic wisdom through house 8 is also blessed by the conjunction between jupiter and uranus which becomes exact on the 21st. That could lead to some really dazzling new opportunities unfolding for you. And ironically, Mars in the sign of Pisces is feeding into that duo sensationally as you start week three. So that can be very exciting, particularly if you are wanting to try something different and more experimental. But let's look at the role of Pluto because it's right on your seventh house cusp. So that's significant for how you relate to people. And there could be some fated connections this month for sure. So that's the big picture as you come into the month. But then Mercury slams on the brakes on day one. It's going to be in retrograde for 23 days. It starts the retrograde at 27 degrees and it inverts back to 16 degrees by the 24th. What does that mean? Well, if you are traveling anywhere, having Mercury retrograde in the ninth house points towards the potential for hassle. You know, it may be something that's beyond your control, such as air traffic controllers, industrial disputes, uh, maybe a systems failure, see software close down. But what we can do is use Mercury retrogrades to our advantage by not just thinking they only bring glitches and problems, Mercury retrogrades give us a chance to rethink, recalibrate, reset our position. The ninth house can be about knowledge. I think if you give yourself the mission to learn new knowledge this month, it can really help to expand your thinking in an extremely positive way. So do see it as a supreme opportunity. I mentioned to you about Venus and Neptune being in the conjunction by the 3rd of April, it is exact, but on the 5th, that's a truly big day for this month because Venus moves into Aries, technically debilitated, but I love Venus in Aries because it has that spark. Venus is about desire, can be about money. The ninth house, remember, is more experimental, but it forges a fantastic link to Pluto. If there is someone that you're relating to, either in a emotional sexual or financial way and there is a real simpatico between you this can be a critical day because also on the fifth the sun forges an alliance exactly with the north node this hasn't happened for 18.6 years it's a cyclical influence huge significance because the north node even if you don't have your personal north node in aries collectively for uh, Leo people has been saying since the 13th of July last year when the true node moved reverse back into Aries look the time for experiment experimentation is here you need to shake things up you need to liberate yourself from things that aren't really giving you a sense of fulfillment because you're wanting essentially in a nutshell excitement 
And if you think about how long Pluto has been going through Capricorn, it may have stolen some of the excitement in your world because you became so invested in providing some kind of efficient service and maybe changing in some ways your approach to health and diet and fitness very positively, but it was all a bit virtuous and worthy. Now you need some drama back in your life. And Venus moving into this area, Mercury being here as well, but the Sun's combining with the North Node is pushing you to embrace the opportunity. But that brings us to the total solar eclipse of the 8th. In the Southern Hemisphere, it is on the 9th. And it's within one minute of Chiron, the wounded healer. But in the ninth house, Chiron and in Aries could be to do with a wound that may be academic or if we've never traveled or if we've always felt a bit fearful of different cultures or in some ways uh, we didn't get the opportunities to get the education that we really would have liked when we were younger. This combination, which is going to provide a backdrop for six months, really is a huge green light to be as open-minded as possible about how you can evolve through looking at things in a new way. But one of the things that's really important is that you don't inhibit the process because you don't feel you're worthy enough to try this fresh approach. Now, from the 10th to the 13th, the advancing sun meets the retreating Mercury. It's exact on the 11th, we have a Kazemi, an inferior conjunction. The Sun, Mercury, Earth. So Mercury is this side of the Sun. The Sun glows up Mercury. For you, the ninth house. Yes, there can be glitches with travel because the ninth house is very much to do with that or distribution. Or also anything to do with um, international affairs. So, you know, if you've got a property overseas and you're dealing with a lawyer, uh, ninth house can be to do with contracts. There could be something that has got a little, little stuck, but remember Mercury retrogrades give us the opportunity to rethink, recalibrate. The 13th sees Mercury indeed connect with Chiron. That rethinking can reduce any inner blockages you may have. The 14th to the 19th sees Mercury and Venus together in the most beautiful of ways, by the 19th exact. If there is someone that you're connecting with, it may be that you come from very different backgrounds, but somehow or another there's a language that you're able to connect through. It may be a shared interest, philosophy. It could be that you fancy each other hugely, but the chances are you do switch each other's minds on. That could be something that's very attractive to you. In fact, Venus is blessing the uh, North Node on the 17th and Chiron on the 21st on its own. But then from the 19th through to the 25th, the Sun does come into a tense right angle with Pluto. So as much as Venus was blessed by Pluto on the 5th, as she moved into the sign of Aries, as the Sun moves into Taurus, there's Pluto lying in wait and it is a resistance because remember Pluto for you is in your sector of relating. The 10th house position of the sun is about your need to assert your power or feel heard and recognized professionally. I think there could be a bit of a, a, a political battle in a professional situation. All this can become much more obvious to be honest on the full moon of the 23rd in the intense sign of Scorpio, which for you flags up how you feel about things. The sun and that other array of planetary influences are all in the 10th house, including Jupiter and Uranus. And yes, you can have success, but it may come at the cost of how you feel about things. So things have to feel right and especially in any kind of professional relationship, if it does not quite flow as you expect, that could be an issue for you around this time. But then Venus moves to climb to the top of your chart on the 29th. You can use your charm to try to defuse things, but it's important when Venus is in a square with Pluto, as it is, that we're not seen as being a little bit cunning or that we're 
actually using charm as a weapon in order to get what we want, whether it's financially or even sexually. But as the month draws to a close, Mars applies to Neptune in your eighth house. There could be some confusion through that particular influence. Maybe it is around an intimate relationship. Maybe it is around a financial package. The wonderful news to tell you is that Mars is going to be leaving the sign of Pisces as this month comes to a close. And by the time we turn the page into May, Mars is going to move into Aries, which of course it rules. And Mars, in turn, as much as the Sun rules your first 10 degrees, in terms of uh, your uh, first decan, of course Mars rules your third 10 degree decan. So you have an appreciation of the energy of Mars. And Mars is going to be really supportive for you as you burst into the new month. Also remember Mercury ends the retrograde on the 24th that it's been going through. So some of the snags can start to work themselves out. It won't be until the 13th of May that it comes out of its post-retrograde shadow. But this is definitely a month of opportunity for you, Leo. I think you're in the mood to shake things up. I just feel that when the sun does move along with Venus into Taurus and clashes with Pluto and the full moon clashes with Pluto, it's just suggesting that sometimes a change is as good as a rest, but when we actually do try something different, we may find that some of the issues that we're trying to move away from can be repeated a little bit, simply because just making that change doesn't change people. And if you're someone who needs to feel heard and someone is resisting your power, your message, your qualities, that could be the problem. But as I mentioned earlier, with Jupiter and Uranus coming together in such a spectacular way on the 21st and linking to Mars, it could be a time when you can really supercharge up your professional situation, but it needs to be in a fresh way and it needs to be where you're given the space because obviously Uranus is very much to do with freedom to try different ideas, Jupiter, philosophies, and not feel too micromanaged. So if you are going to be changing your job or your role as this month goes on because of that desire to have some fresh starts and some excitement in your life, just be aware of the politics. It's been a real pleasure being with you, Leo. Thank you so much for joining me. Please do like, comment, share or subscribe.